All right, guys, uh, I'm making this video because I couldn't believe uh, when I started doing some of my own research, uh, I couldn't find anything on YouTube, really. There's a couple out there, um, nothing super detailed, though, and some of them, some other languages besides English. Uh, so I just want to make a super quick video. Hopefully it shouldn't get too long. Uh, just kind of going over the HRF concept skiff. Uh, this is the model. I think it released a little bit later. Um, it's the skiff mount that's set up to work with the Unity Fast mount uh, for like the aim points. Um, attaches directly onto that actual mount. This one is D-ball specific. Uh, I've had some issues. Uh, so we'll go over the rifle, I guess, and then we'll kind of get into it. So this is my duty rifle um, that I use on patrol and uh, on SWAT operations. I'm currently sworn LE full time. Uh, it's a Mark 18 upper, the new RIS 3. I run the Aimpoint T2 with all the Unity setup. And you can see right now, uh, I'm currently using a uh, Unity mount like that's typically for EOTech uh, to mount my D-ball. I'm kind of giving it that GBRS type look, uh, but really I just like having a laser more towards the center because when you're running a can, it gets pretty heavy out front whenever you got all that stuff on there. Uh, I used to run a mall and uh, just the weight out front got a little old. I started running this style and I actually uh, really like the setup. It works really well for me. Only issue I've had is, uh, is I've gotten my rifle a few times out of my trunk and this lever that's on the factory D-ball mount is uh, not very good. So I found my laser basically just laying loose inside my case. I do know that like ADM and a couple other companies make um, aftermarket mounts for it, um, but I saw this skiff. I also saw like the Jaeger works mounts. A um, few other companies out there making stuff, but this skiff just really caught my attention. I didn't jump on it right away just because I couldn't get a lot of information on it. So uh, it seems like it's gaining uh, traction in the community. Um, so I'm going to be giving it a shot, uh, checking it out. My plan is to make this video kind of like an unboxing, somewhat install video, and then we'll uh, check back later and I'll give you some reviews on it as far as if it's come loose, if I've had any issues with holding zero, uh, just anything like that. Um, we do train monthly and this rifle gets a lot of use. In fact, it's filthy right now. Uh, so, um, you know, we'll go over it though and we'll take a look and see what we find out after a couple months of uh, actually using it. Again, I couldn't find a lot on the internet about it. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna strip down the rifle real quick. We'll check it, make sure it's clear. We got a clear, clear rifle. I'm gonna go ahead and probably take it all the way apart to give us a little bit uh, easier working space here. So I actually made a video a while back and I had a lot of requests for more videos and I just never made it happen. Time restraints, things like that. And so uh, hopefully if this is something you guys like, I'll continue to do this as I have time. So we're down to like the unity mount again. Um, get these up out of the way here and we'll go ahead and take that other unity mount off as well. And I know probably the lighting's not like the absolute greatest here. So as I get into stuff and you need to see maybe some details, I will uh, come up closer to the camera where you can actually see. You can see there uh, the factory mount that comes with it. And again, there's no like lock. So inside of cases, slings, anything like that, you can just grab that and pop it pretty easy. And then you, you know, I'm not gonna say you're gonna lose your zero, but you definitely are gonna lose it staying on its mount. Uh, which kind of bothers me, scares me a little bit. So um, there's that portion of it. And let me get the rest of it off here. This is also going to give me my unity mount back so I can actually run it with a couple of uh, my other rifles and EOTech setups. So I'm kind of stoked about that too. So that's the Unity riser that I was using for it. Um, again, we'll be getting rid of that. So HRF Skiff D-Ball, that's the model of this one. Uh, we'll open it up and look. I honestly have not opened it and looked yet to see what exactly it comes with. I already checked out the, uh, the instructions and uh, we'll probably refer back to that here in a little bit. Um, but I think I got most of it pulled up. So. Uh, shouldn't have to, but whenever you do uh, get your skiff, if you decide to order one, 
just scan that QRF code and it takes you to uh, the page for all the instructions, just as far as torque spec. I mean, it's pretty, pretty obvious how it comes together. Uh, inside, pretty simple, not much in there. Just a sticker. This will be, uh, this is the back plate, um, which I'll show you how this kind of all comes together here in a little bit, but this is gonna be the back plate that actually mounts it to the unity mount and the screw for it. So, there's that. It's got an arrow up. Screw and mount. Uh, this probably won't come with all of the mounts, um, or all of the skiffs, excuse me, just because again, this is a D ball specific. So it's D ball direct mount. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to get rid of this mount in general. I won't even need it anymore. It will just go away and the D ball will actually directly mount to the skiff. And that's what these two screws out here are. So, um, let me see where they go through the bottom, but this is the skiff. Uh, again, this is just an attachment uh, for the unity mount. So you do have to have the unity mount in order to make this work, but this will go on right here. And that will give you a rough idea of what we're gonna be looking at as the final product once we get there. So take that back off there real quick. Next, we're gonna need to uh, go ahead and mount the D-ball to the skiff first, because I'm assuming obviously I won't be able to get a wrench on it afterward. So let me find my hex bits really quick. I was mostly prepared for this. I'll have to figure out which one it is here real quick. These are probably gonna be pretty tight. Make sure it's not this one that feels right. Yeah, it's definitely right. It's just really tight. Super sketchy. Huh. We don't do a lot of night vision operations, unfortunately, uh, with the team I'm on. So the primary use I get out of this is Viz. Um, it's really helpful uh, for VCQB stuff and inside houses, um, close quarter stuff. I'm just a lot quicker uh, with a laser in certain situations. And so that's the main reason I run this. That's why I don't have anything super fancy like a, a mall anymore. Um, mainly it's used for Viz, like I said. So the D-ball definitely does everything I need it to as far as that goes. But you can see now you're left with two like lugs. Uh, those lugs will fit right down in here. Now, this can be used with other laser types that attach via Picatinny. Um, however, though, I've been told that the way they have to mill this out um, for optimal clamping for those devices, you'd probably rather go with the skiff that's actually made specifically for just universal Picatinny mount. Um, but it will work in theory with it is what the instructions and all the stuff on the website says. Um, but you can see there the line of the holes will line up and it will sit on the skiff somewhat like that. These I believe have just a tad bit of Loctite. I'm going to go ahead and put more on there though. Um, it's like one of those super thin like layers and it's not a whole lot. So, and what we're looking at for these two screws, uh, as far as torque setting, is going to be, I believe, 40 inch pounds, but let me confirm that really quick. Yeah, so we're looking at uh, 40 inch pounds for that. Um, I'm still using that wrench. I have not had any issues with it myself personally yet. Uh, I am gonna get the fix it sticks eventually. I've gotten into the precision world lately. Um, and so 
uh, with that, I kind of like the uh, concept of the uh, fix it sticks a little bit more. But this has definitely done everything I've needed, needed it to, and I've never had any major issues with any torque variances or anything. I think it's definitely close enough. So we'll go ahead and get the D-ball mounted first to the skiff. I have like really high hopes for this mount. So I'm hoping that again, like most of the stuff that I'm seeing online is gonna pretty much hold true as far as that goes. I always like giving this a few clicks, sorry. All right, I'm gonna go grab one more thing really quick. I'll be right back that I wanna make sure I have. And if you guys felt like you could hear me that whole time, it's because you could. Running a mic setup, like some Holly, Hollyland or something. It uh, it works pretty well. I just want to make sure I witness mark these. It talks about witness marking the uh, main clamp screw, but I'm gonna go ahead and witness mark. All of these screws. Hopefully, I'll be able to see it once it's on the uh, rifle. So again, just witness mark so I can make sure that if it backs off, I'll be able to tell relatively easy. But we've got the uh, D-ball mounted onto the skiff now. Hopefully, that's coming through. You guys can see that pretty good. Again, you just got this like milled out recessed lug right there, and that's going to uh interface with again the front of the unity mount and just shoving it in that first time when i did it a minute ago it uh it felt like it had a decent amount of uh or a pretty tight tolerance i should say so just that in itself when I mean, you kind of see it's hanging on there pretty good just alone just doing that um so hopefully that means it's going to be a pretty good overall lockup i'm gonna go ahead and hit thread locker on the screw as well. And again, this has an up arrow, so I'm gonna assume that's up. And this is the only part we're gonna be kind of figuring out together is how exactly you get this on and through this whole, uh, actually screw this down. I'm assuming we can just go through the same exact shape of the, nope, can't do that. Okay, so we're gonna have to like feed it through. So probably get, maybe get it, go ahead and get it set into place, I'm assuming is what they want us to do. That shouldn't be still too bad. Yeah, no, it's not bad at all. So, I just kind of rocked it in place through that side hole. And then I'll be able to actually access the screw through the back. Now in the instructions, um, and if I can figure this out, I'm still learning a lot of stuff with like YouTube. I will, uh, I will see if I can get the instructions to pull up there and show you what I'm talking about. But it talks about applying downward pressure, and I'll show you when we get there, on a certain part of the mount while you're tightening this stuff. And I'm assuming it's got something to do with just maintaining zero and the way that the mount pulls together. But essentially it says, once we start getting pretty close, which we are, and I'm gonna go ahead and probably pop this off just to try to make this a little bit easier. It wants you to push down and apply downward pressure right here. 
downward. So we're just going to like kind of like grab and pinch basically towards like the ejection port is pretty much the way I'm doing it right now. Almost letting the rifle weight pull down in that direction. And then I'm going to snug it up. So we got it snug for now. And I'm going to check and confirm one more thing here real quick again. I'm pretty sure that is uh, the same. I just want to make sure I'm right on that. If you hear anything weird in the background, I apologize. I have dogs. So, okay. So the um, other bolt here that we're getting to drive in is actually 35 inch pounds. So we'll take that back down to 35. And we'll go ahead and get that torque down to spec. Depending on get my hand on this pretty good, hopefully. If not, I'm going to go get an extension. Because this definitely is a little tricky. There we go. And again, I'm OCD, so I'm going to hit it a few times. Make sure we're there. All right, cool. So I'll go ahead and plug my cable back in here real quick. So that is essentially the final product of what we got. Uh, it's definitely, you know, probably a lot cleaner looking than what I had on there before. You can kind of tell that would, mount was not necessarily made for that. Uh, weight wise, it's definitely probably a little bit lighter than the Unity mount being on there too, but it's not gonna make a huge difference. I think the overall weight for this was 2.3, yeah, 2.32 ounces. Um, it is made of 7075 T6 aluminum, hard anodized. Um, some people thought they were plastic. I think that was some of the bad rep that it got uh, was some people were thinking that they were actually made out of plastic because some of the other stuff that HRF makes um, is made out of plastic. But no, this is definitely nice. It feels like nice quality aluminum. Um, but essentially that's what you end up with. I don't know if it's gonna give you a good uh, idea or not. Let me turn on the red dot and uh, I'll see if you guys can get some type of a uh, sight picture of what you would be looking at, looking down that. Um, it definitely clears the D-ball perfectly fine. Uh, and the reason why I like this mount, if, uh, if you're not aware, is it allows you to basically still have your activation switches uh, forward of the laser. Um, so the laser, again, can be back further in relation to the, the center line of the rifle. And that helps us greatly with you know, weight when we're running these heavy things. And so with my hand here, that laser, both lasers will still clear over my thumb. Um, for whenever it actually activates. So that laser won't be bouncing off my thumb if it were mounted to the lower portion of the rail. Same thing if I were to have to go support hand, uh, strong hand, excuse me, on the rail, um, it would still be able to clear both lasers. So that's the reason why you kind of need something to get that laser lifted up. And like I said, there's a lot of stuff on the market right now. Uh, there's several things on the market right now. This is the one that I just honestly wanted to try out and give a shot because if it's solid, this is what I plan to stick with. I like the design of it. Um, I'm actually planning on going with the EOTech on gun laser soon. And when I do, I'll probably order another one of these as well to mount it um, correctly, like the way they say it should be. But uh, that's pretty much it. Um, again, my plan is, is uh, after I get some time in with this, uh, you know, we train monthly, if not uh, multiple times a month, plus not to mention my standard uh, patrol call outs and everything with it. And then on top of that, uh, I do do my own training on the side. So it should get a lot of use and I should be able to relatively give you guys some feedback in the next like, you know, month or two or so. I want to definitely want to get some time with it and uh, see if I have any issues with anything coming loose. And again, after I get a good couple zeros on it, um, I'm going to go out and check it multiple times uh, and make sure I'm not losing that zero. But, uh, you know, I'll definitely report back and give you guys some uh, information um, on, you know, whether or not I think this is worth it. Uh, it's it's worth it to try to me at least again, cause it kind of, you know, again, frees up my other mount over there. And I think it just looks a little bit cleaner, cleans the whole entire rifle package up. So that's gonna be it uh, for this. I may be making a couple other videos today actually on some other stuff I got. And if I do, I'll try to drop all of it and, you know, don't expect any crazy fancy editing right now. Cause I just, you know, I don't have that ability right now. I'm still kind of getting into this. My main thing is, is I just want to get you guys the information on the actual like products and stuff that I know Whenever I jump online, if I can't find anything on them, I want to be able to provide that for you guys. So if you like this, you know, maybe hit, hit like, give me a subscribe. Um, my last video did pretty well, so hopefully this one does as well. Um, 
But check out my previous one. It's just on a Geisley upper. Uh, and I'll talk to you guys next one. Thanks.